everyone and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about predictive analytics, how it fits within the Northcraft capabilities. And we're going to begin with looking at an overview of capabilities for reporting and analytics in general. So one thing you know a lot of people do well is descriptive reporting, something that's included with Northcraft. It's standard, must-have, um, typically uses SQL. And in a you know, use case here would be backlog progress reporting for incident management or changes. So it's looking at that queue, is it growing, is it expanding, where we need to hire resources, or is it shrinking? And we're doing a really good job of, of working through that backlog. backlog. Next, we get into diagnostic analytics, and this is an area where you know Northcraft really um, led early in the market um, using uh, multidimensional analysis, um, specifically the MDX query language on the back end, so that using our canned measures and key performance indicators for all of the different uh, enterprise applications that we support, like NetCool, ServiceNow, BMC Remedy, et cetera. So here you're looking at things like, you know, a category or subcategory of requests and incidents that breached an SLA over the last 13 months. So you look at that at the aggregate level and then drill down into the grain across multiple tables in a single report visualization or dashboard. So that's something MDX really does well is that large data volume, multiple tables, an area where SQL tends to break down. Uh, next is in the predictive analytics category. So that's what we're going to be showing today. We're going to be using, you can use uh, data mining expressions or the Azure ML, which is machine learning. For Power BI, uh, for the quick insights functionality that we're showing today, that is the pre-built Azure ML. So we'll be looking at that. And so here it's going to look at things like you know, it's going to go through all of this different data, all these dimensions and attributes, and tell you, um, you know, which week of the year are we most likely to experience a breached SLA or high resolution time or whatever it is that you don't want to happen. We get to have control over what we want to include in the analysis, and it can be anything from the ServiceNow data model. Okay, so we'll be loading up our data model today using a ServiceNow data set, but it could be anything. It could be any one of our business intelligence applications. Okay, so first we're gonna log into the public cloud, okay? And if you would like access to this, you can certainly contact us through the website. We'd be happy to uh, set that up for you, really easy to do. Uh, we're gonna use the import functionality. We're not gonna have live data connections as we usually do. Okay, so what's happening at a high level here is we're pulling data out of the Amazon EC2 Northcraft BI application. We're loading it into a Power BI desktop model, and then we're pushing it into the Azure cloud that Microsoft has to generate those quick insights using its canned algorithms. Okay, we can use the canned algorithms in Excel as well, and that's where the data mining expressions come into play, but we're not gonna show that today as we've already created some videos that highlight how that works. And it's very similar. The math is the same in a lot of the, in a lot of different cases. Uh, the interface is different, okay? And the interface is, you know, really much, uh, it's vastly superior, really, in Power BI. Um, okay, so let's load our model. <clears throat> And we're going to load the incident management cube. And we've included the configuration management dimension as well today, just um, to show you how the multidimensional analysis works as well, which is nice. Okay, and then we're going to bring in some of our common uh, performance metrics. So we'll look at average time to resolve, percentage of incidents meeting SLAs. Uh, we'll look at uh, total count, you know, count of incidents, incidents closed. Okay, and then next, we want to bring in the attributes from these dimensions. So we'll start with incident management, and we'll look at the uh, assignee hierarchy, which includes assign to, assign group, and number. Remember not to duplicate the incident number. That will completely mess up your analysis. So just, you know, if you include another hierarchy, make sure you uncheck that, Okay. Uh, then we will just to avoid that. I'll, I'll go ahead and you know manually select them. So I'll do subcategory, and uh, we'll include priority and maybe category as well. Yeah, and then let's bring in from a different dimension. We'll bring in our CMDB 
uh, attributes of model ID, model number, and let's say manufacturer, okay? All right, and we simply click the load button. Now, this is first, you know, putting in essentially a staging area, which is our Power BI desktop worksheet. Now, some of the algorithms that Microsoft has built in here in the initial release of Quick Insights, uh, you have things like time series outliers, category outliers, majority factors, um, overall trends, uh, seasonality. Um, so, you know, these are things that we would typically build in an Excel spreadsheet. In fact, I even have in some of our other videos, you can look up, um, you know, the seasonal service desk, uh, you know, as an example of that. You know, it could be, it's fairly time consuming to come up with all these different types of analysis. So when I load it in into Quick Insights, it's saving, you know, hours and hours of, uh, you know, an analyst time potentially. Or, you know, what I can do is, you know, analyze across the board and then um, get more specific once I find something interesting. I think that's the best way to use this. Okay, so we loaded our 250,000 records there. Um, you know, it really didn't take too long. I think you noticed, and that's one of the advantages definitely of using uh, Northcraft and the power of our cloud as well there on Amazon EC2. Okay, so we'll load in things like instance closed, our category, you know, everything we selected earlier, we'll just, we're just gonna select each of these. Assignment groups, okay, percentage of instance meeting SLAs. So that's what will include our analysis. Now, we've already cleaned up a great deal of this data. Uh, you'll notice, you know, the ETL has already taken into account the times. Uh, we've built in, you know, the aggregations, fiscal years, calendar years, um, you know, weeks, days, months, um, quarter, year, all those types of things. Um, so that, that greatly simplifies the analysis. One thing we do need to do, though, is filter out some of the empty data because it will always be there. You know, here's an example of this, you know, incidents without assignee. Now, I may want to know that. Um, OK, um, you know, subcategory, though, you know, I, maybe I don't want to include those or, you know, uh, configuration items with no model ID. That might, might be completely unhelpful. So, um, all right. So we'll go ahead and uh, filter out some of that. So let's do subcategory first. So let's. Put in a filter. Oh, man, let me get to my page level filters or report level filters. You can use either of those. And so let's do, um, let's filter out model ID. And so I'll just do advanced filtering and show items that do not contain not specified. And let's just make sure I've spelled that properly, not specified. Okay, and we're gonna reuse that. So let's apply that filter and you notice how it filtered down there. Um, so I don't want subcategories also, maybe they say other, or maybe I do um, because I would like to see specifically, um, you know, people who have kind of been lazy and put in other. <laughs> so uh, that I'll, I'll leave that up to you, but okay, we'll do, uh, we'll do, let's drop in another page filter for subcategory and I want to, I don't want to include uh, items that have uh, not specified in the name. That is not helpful to me. Okay, so once I have my data cleaned up to the extent that I would like, and it may not be perfect, but I, I, we'll just go ahead and publish. Um, I, I go to the Home tab here in Power BI Desktop and I click Publish, okay? So we are eight minutes and 55 seconds in and, uh, and, and we're ready to publish. So that's, I think that's great. All right, uh, so we'll save our changes and you wanna give it a name that indicates what the data is. So this is our incident data. Um, so click on save, place it. And this is gonna to publish to the cloud. So I wanna replace the data set that I already had in the cloud because I've done this before a couple times. And, you know, the amount of time it takes will depend on the amount of data you have, but you can expect the uh, Azure cloud to process a million records of data in less than a minute is, is what I've seen so far, um, at least with the, uh, you know, analysis services piece here, the multidimensional. Okay, so we click Get Quick Insights, and that's where these algorithms will be cranking away. And let's let you see that. Okay, so it's searching for insights. 
And again, you know, this is going to be the whole, you know, the seasonality, the overall trends, the time series outliers, category outliers. Um, so you can see what that looks like against your data. Now, obviously, this is, you know, much more powerful when you're looking at your own data and not uh, what we've decided to load in. But I just wanted to give you an idea here. Okay, so here are quick insights. So um, just going to sc scroll through this and see, okay, for example, here's a category outlier. Network has noticeably more uh, configuration management model IDs for um, you know, incidents with priority of planning. That's number five uh, within ServiceNow. Okay, so that's interesting. It may be because it was you know auto generated from a monitoring system. Okay, so it's auto filled out by the monitoring system. That's a potential insight there. Okay, uh, we'll hover over this so we can see the different groups. So network operations L1 and L2 have noticeably more. Uh, and, and this is a good thing, I think, uh, incident category of network, as they should. So, I mean, they're properly categorized there. Not, not particularly interesting uh, there. Uh, not specified accounts for the majority of incidents, and I should have filtered this out. Um, and these are not specified, so, um, and you can see the percentages you hover over, but, you know, 89% of incidents essentially don't have a CI relationship um, where we have met the SLA. That's what the value of one means. One is met, zero is missed. And so this is something really, you know, when you plug it into your data, like I said, it, these quick insights are going to be extremely meaningful to you uh, and will serve as a starting point for your analysis where you can then decide where you want to dig deeper. Um, so here I think, uh, you know, server and application server have noticeably more configuration uh, management model IDs for, uh, you know, Unix and Linux admin support L2. Interesting. So, you know, that to me just says it's properly, properly categorized. You know, but even for just the simplest data quality initiatives, you know, that's a, that's a helpful piece of analysis. Okay, well, we've taken a brief, brief look. We're just under 15 minutes, so we'd, we'd like to make sure that no video goes longer than that. Hopefully you've enjoyed this brief session on predictive analytics, and let us know if you have any questions by con contacting us through the website. Thank you very much, and have a nice day.